Peace be to you all. Assalamu alaikum. This is Omar Abdul Malik, physician assistant and health educator. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes um, to uh, talk to you all about early admissions. I just finished my uh, 5K uh, pre dawn run. Um, I'm in the midst of, uh, of Ramadan. So, Ramadan Mubarak, for those of you all who are observing it, um, we have to uh, have a uh, pre uh, pre um, dawn meal called iftar before um, before we fast from uh, sun up from dawn till um, sunset. So I like to try to get my my workout in as well as my uh, my meal in. Um, but I want to talk to you all about um, the application process to physician assistant school because CASPA just opened up yesterday as of. Um, April 30th. This is uh, May 1st as of the shooting of this video. So CASPA, this is the uh, centralized application process for um, physician assistant students. Um, so it's, uh, it's all on the computer. So you, there's a bunch of things that you've got to get in. There's your, your uh, recommendation letters, um, preferably from physician assistants. Um, they also accept uh, letters of recommendation from uh, from physicians also um, there's also um, your personal statement as well is your your um, transcripts from your classes so I was asked by a few of you all who are applying to PA school about applying early um, especially if you have not completed all of your courses my advice to you is try to be as complete an applicant as possible. I would not rush it. If you have not completed all of your courses, try to finish your courses first, even if that means taking another year. Um, and by that, I mean, if you, if you still have several courses to take, you've got anywhere from six to, uh, I don't know, six to 10 courses to take. I would say finish those courses first and then apply um, maybe late or even next year. You might not like that, but I'll tell you, PA school, is it's become so incredibly competitive. You don't want to give the admissions committee members an excuse to not accept you. Uh, you want to make the decision-making process um, for, for not <laughs> granting you an interview as, as hard as possible for them. Um, case in point, I sat on the admissions committee um, from maybe 2000 till uh, 2004, 2005 at some very good PA schools. And um, it's, it's an arduous process. It's not easy being on the admissions committee. You spend eight hours sometimes at the, at the school just interviewing uh, prospective students, several prospective students throughout the day. And uh, there was um, um, one scenario where uh, I, I came in early, and this was at a top uh, PA program, and uh, I was greeted by the, uh, the faculty there. They said, hey, oh, hey, Omar, how you doing? I well, just grabbed some files and just go through them. And I was like, oh, my gosh. There were boxes, several boxes of um, PA applications. Um, and, you know, you look at people's GPAs and if they've completed all of their courses, if they have the, the um, adequate number of direct patient contact hours, what were the recommendations like, and things like that. But it's, it's an arduous process. And then you have to interview them. So it takes several hours. Now, students, let's say you've got a student who maybe has got a higher GPA than another student. But let's say a student's got a 3.7 but then they still have like six courses that they have to take. And then you look at another student who has maybe a 3.3, .3, but they have a bachelor's degree and they've taken everything. They've taken all of the prerequisites. They're a complete applicant. Um, I would go with the one who, you know, had completed all of their courses because you don't know how the student who hasn't completed their courses, you don't know how they're going to do. You know, and, and, you know, a lot of times um, they might not fare as well as you think they are, as, as they think they are. Uh, 
they might flunk the courses or <laughs> something like that. So you you don't want to give uh, a provisional um, uh, acceptance letter to somebody who is still an incomplete applicant when you lit you literally have thousands of other applicants applying to the school for for just a few positions. There's um, a typical class might be on average maybe 40 students out of 2,000 applicants. And when you get down to 2,000, you got to go through 2,000 applicants to decide what couple of hundred applicants you're going to um, interview. And so, so that's just my advice. You can take it or leave it. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I speak as somebody who was involved in administration in um, um, PA programs and uh, um, taught as a, as a professor in, in uh, PA programs. Um, so I've got a little bit more experience than maybe somebody who is a student or, or a new graduate. But, um, you know, that, that's, that's uh, my advice. I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors. It's a very interesting time to be a physician assistant. There's only 150, about 150,000 um, medically licensed physician assistants in the country compared to... Um, I think two million nurses and or four million nurses and about two million doctors. So uh, we 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 often get overlooked in this um, in fighting this uh, this uh, COVID nineteen war, but we're we're there and we're an integral part of uh, of the uh, the forces that are trying to fight this this virus. It's um it's a great career. I've been doing it for twenty years and uh, still really enjoying it. But um, I hope you all found that, um, that advice helpful. Um, if you want, I'll look over your personal statements. I'll even look over your transcripts with you. Uh, you can reach me on various uh, modes of uh, social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And I'll put my contact information in, my, um, in the description. Okay, take care. Peace.